Now, God of War Ragnarok comes out for the PC. And believe it or not, despite the fact that I'm a content creator, I don't hear a single word about it. And I go on many forums, I go on many places. So if I don't hear about it, <laughs> they have a problem. Now, I'm pretty sure there were commercials and there were some people talking. Um, but it wasn't a massive cultural event. Especially for a game like God of War. I remember when the first God of War came out for the PC. There was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of hype. People were discussing it on many communities. There was a lot of fan art being created. So this is not justified in any way, shape, or form. The only problem is, I think, they don't have a community anymore. There is no more word of mouth. At least not for God of War. So anyway, the game comes out. And it's on Steam. It's doing pretty mediocre. Some people would even say bad when it comes to sales. There's a lot of cope from the game journalists. They're saying, well, like people already played it on PlayStation, uh, the price, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but the reality is, again, like with other titles from the same series, even though people played it previously on the PlayStation, they were still very hyped when it came to the PC. And, and usually people are hyped when it comes to the PC because uh, of the added graphics, the uh, technological improvements, but mostly the mods. Because you can now mod stuff. And um, yeah, there's no hype. And, and I think it's a cope. It's like, oh, people played it previously, I guess. But like if Bloodborne came out on the PC now, there would have been massive hype. Even though the game is very old and people have played it previously. In fact, uh, there are people that are trying to mod Bloodborne for the PC. And uh, there's a lot of hype, and there's a big community around it. So, no, I, I, I don't think that it's because people have played Ragnarok on the PlayStation, and now they're not hyped that it's coming on Steam. But anyway, uh, I think one of the main reasons, and this is what the game journalists don't want to talk about, is the fact that it requires a PlayStation Network account, and many gamers are treating it like it's poison. I mean, Sony itself has lost its brand name. Uh, people do not recognize the brand anymore. They do not trust it. They, they look at it with contempt. And this is really not the place you want to be if you're a company that's built around making entertainment. Because entertainment, it's all about hype. It's all about communities. It's about people smiling when they see your product, people willing to defend your product. And this is not where Sony is at now. Sony is at the place where people won't make a PlayStation account even if it's free. And we got to see this with Helldivers, where the game was one of the most beloved games of the year, and it had a huge, vibrant community. And the moment they said, yeah, in order to moderate you better, we're going to impose Sony's morality on you, so we need you to start a PlayStation Network account. And people not only refused to do that, but they also went and refunded their game, gave bad reviews to the game, uh, basically showing the disgust they have towards Sony. So now they're doing the same with God of War. Like you install it on Steam, but you got a link to a PlayStation account and they're very outspoken on why they do it. Number one is to collect data from people, right? They want to harvest your information and monetize it. So you're basically paying a, a full price for a game. And then on top of that, they will harvest info so they can get more money from you. And then they also want to moderate, right? So, like, if you have bad takes, if you have bad opinions, uh, if you violate the TOS from Sony, then uh, you, you will get your account banned. So, like, every single game that's connected to that account, you lose. In other words, you don't really own the games, which is what a lot of gamers are fighting against. We don't like this mentality that you don't get to own your games. Like, back in... Uh, the 1990s, if I had a StarCraft CD-ROM, I could be a cheeky little shit outside, I could say whatever I wanted, I could even get arrested, but when I get out of prison, I still have my StarCraft video game, right? Like, it's not correctly tied to my personality, I don't have to be a decent human being in order to own a video game, uh, which is not something that's the case now. Now it's believed that companies that are educators, and, you know, if Sony says you don't need to misgender anyone and you do, then uh, you should lose access to all of your games. Like, I'm sorry, but I, I disagree with this take. I, I do not see why I need to support it with my wallet. So, uh, people found a way around it, because as I mentioned before, uh, the uh, PC world is about mods and modding. So, people managed to mod 
the the requirement to start the PlayStation Network account in order to play a single player game. Because this is another thing, right? Like, why why do they care so much about you starting a PSN account? I mean, you already paid for the product. It's a single player product. It's already on Steam, so like it it's already has like some protections against uh, people downloading it illegally. So so why do they care so much about the PlayStation Network account? Interesting, isn't it? And uh, now Nexus mods and other websites like GitHub have taken down the mod. And, and a lot of people are hating these websites for doing so. Uh, but on this particular occasion, I can say that it may not be the website's fault. And I feel so dirty for defending Nexus mods. But I do believe that Sony got their legal teams involved. I, I do think that lawsuits could be in the making because these mods would actually cause them financial damage. Because again, like the reason they want you to start the PlayStation Network account is so that they can make money off your ass. Because otherwise, it, there, there is absolutely no explanation on why do they care so much. Why do they give a shit about a single player game if you have a PSN account or not, right? So, so I wouldn't be surprised if Nexus mods and GitHub got cease and desist letters over this. And the question is, like, why do people blame Nexus Mods? Well, again, it's the reputation. Like, these companies have worked very hard for the last two or three years in order to create the worst reputation possible that they can have with gamers. Nexus Mods is a very ideological website. And we have noticed it in the past that if you play a game like Baldur's Gate and you want to make the character Will white. I mean, it's a single-player game. Who cares, right? Well, Nexus Mods cares. Like they, they will not allow that. If you want to remove a splash screen from a Tomb Raider remake that basically implies that the previous developers were pieces of shit because they made an insensitive game, uh, Nexus Mods doesn't allow that. They step in. If you want to remove LGBT flags, no, Nexus Mods steps in. If you want to remove pronouns, Nexus Mods steps in. But if you want to do the opposite, though, if you want to add the LGBT flag in Harry Potter, in uh, Hogwarts, and it's on all the walls now, it's everywhere, oh, Nexus Mods allows that. If you want to add pronouns to the game, Nexus Mods allows that, right? So it's not a neutral system. It's, it's a political system. And when you go with politics, a lot of people will disagree and a lot of people will hate you, just like real-life politics. I mean, there are people that legitimately hate Republicans and there are people that legitimately hate Democrats. And if you're going to be a company that's supposed to be for everyone, but you choose to be political and outspoken about it, you're going to get a lot of haters. And when it comes to the gamers, it seems that these companies have worked tirelessly by creating arbitrary rules, by not talking with the gamers, by not negotiating with the gamers, and just doing whatever the company thinks is best. So they're getting a lot of haters, and their reputation is absolutely in the gutter. Which is why when Nexus Mods does something like this, people assume, oh, so you're just working hand-in-hand -hand with Sony. You're just wanting Sony to milk customers of money. You want uh, to create the concept of people not owning their games. And you're taking a stance on this with whatever power you have. And the limits of your power, the limits of extent of your power is to ban the mod from your website. That's what you can do, so that's what you will do. I'm pretty sure if they had more power, if they could do more, they would probably do more, right? This is how people think based on the reputation of Nexus mods. But in this situation, I don't think is that they are uh, trying to cozy up to Sony. I just think that uh, there are legal issues regarding this mod because it would actually do financial damages to the company. Now, now from a legal standpoint, whether they're right or not, like if this were to go to court, uh, if they would win or not, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. It's the threat of litigation that's the issue, right? You don't want to go to court with Sony. They, they have infinite resources compared to you. They have teams of lawyers. Like, you do not want to go to court with Sony, even if you win, right? Like, you still have to pay for lawyers. You still have to go to the court. So, a lot of companies will just react to the cease and desist letter, just take it down and be like, okay, fine. You know, we're, we're not going to allow this mod. So, that's my take. That's what I think is happening. Um, but, still... Not good look for Sony, especially since uh, their games aren't selling now. They're not selling on, on their own platform. They're not selling on Steam. Uh, the trend looks as if it's going to get worse rather than stabilize or get better. Every single time Sony releases a new project, uh, people aren't interested. There's no hype. When the project actually hits the stores, it's got 
lukewarm reception at best, usually even lower. So, yeah, Sony is now in a very bad position. They don't have exclusives. They, they're not vibing with their customers. And I generally don't know where it's going to go from here for them. Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.